Uh, when I first started playing around with the double box tail configuration, <laughs> yeah, that's not my best work. Um, I was just messing around with it. I didn't really know it was uh, going to be all that special. But it turned out that everything about it was special and that people would want it and that the, the essence of the business problem is nobody can make this thing. Um, you should open my e email box and see you know, the emails. I want one. When are you going to be done? I want one. When are you going to be done? And, and that list is way, way, way too long uh, for our existing manufacturing capacity to uh, respond to. So we're really looking for vendor partners, fabrication partners, especially the uh, interest aligned capital it'll take to uh, uncork this thing. And it'll take time. The first airplanes that we build are going to be mega expensive, right? Uh, but if we do this right, this effort in engineering simpler structures, fewer parts will pay off in the lowest cost per unit that we can achieve. The uh, basis of this is broken into two simple parts. There's passive drag reduction, which we're all very familiar with. Clean it up, you know, get rid of all that drag producing stuff that's sticking out on the airplane. But the ingredient that makes uh, this special is the double box tail configuration. And I'm just going to explain this one more time. That up there is the tail. And this down here is the wing. And the tail up there is pushing down and it's pushing down with 8% of the vehicle weight. And we're doing that on purpose. Because that is the optimum for creating the maximum possible span efficiency. So if you've got a limit to your wingspan, the, high, the lowest induced drag will be achieved when you have a downforce on a connected winglet up above and behind it.